Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're going to be turning through to the letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. If you're wondering where we're going, we just finished off the book of Mark. And as I said a very long time ago, my plan is to bounce between a gospel and an epistle back and forth. So first we took Matthew, then we took Romans, then we took Mark, and now we're taking 1st and 2nd Corinthians one after the other because they go hand in hand really beautifully. So if you want to join me, turn through to 1st Corinthians chapter 1, and we're going to read the first few verses. But before I read that, as always, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, which is rich and true, and we just pray that as we turn to it now, that you would give us hearts that are ready to understand, that we might benefit from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, first three verses today. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother, Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, if you've ever read through the epistles before, you'll know that lots of them start in almost the same way. You get this typical name at the front. So here, Paul, called by the will of God, where the writer, the author, tells everyone who they are. You then get a address. This is who I'm writing to. And you then get a blessing. And you see that exact same format here, don't you? Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. And, and it can be really tempting for us when we read these words to just sort of gloss over them, to think to ourselves, oh, it's just another greeting. It's just another introduction to a letter. It's not that important. Let's skip over it and get to the more important parts. But what we often find is that there is some really critical key information that is contained in those first few verses that help us to actually understand and interpret the rest of the letter. And so I want to briefly just highlight two things for us that come out of this introduction that are very significant for the rest of the letter. Firstly, notice what Paul is saying about himself as he writes this introduction. He says, Paul called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. Now you might say to yourself, why is that significant? Well, think for a second. What is Paul declaring about himself when he writes those words? Well, firstly, he's declaring that he is not just a generic Joe Bloggs. He's not just a guy who has a perspective to share on what's going on in Corinth. No. What he's reminding the Corinthians is that he is a person of authority. He is an apostle. He, he is an apostle on whom the church is built. The, the building blocks which are laid upon the foundation, Jesus Christ himself. And so Paul is reminding them that he is writing from a place of authority. But he also reminds them that he's not just writing from a place of authority as an apostle, but he's writing as one who's called by God. He has been set aside for a very specific work. And this work includes writing a letter to the church at Corinth. And so they must take seriously what he has to say. It's not up to them to decide whether they want to listen, but rather they must listen. For when Paul writes, he writes on behalf of God. And I think there's a little subtle reminder in this for us. Not only does it help us interpret the whole book of the Corinthians, because we recognize that every one of these chapters and every one of these verses that we run into come from God himself. There's a reminder for all of us as we sit under the preaching and teaching and the godly leadership 
of God's appointed men. God gives us, he calls, elders. And some of those elders are called to labor in the preaching and teaching of God's word. And we are all to put ourselves under their authority and to submit ourselves to the teaching of God's word as long as it is faithful to the scriptures. And so let us receive the word of God from God's appointed men, wherever you find yourself, as though it came from God himself, just like the Corinthians were to receive the letter from Paul. And so firstly, we see that there is something said about Paul, but then we equally see that there's something profound said about the Corinthians. Now, to appreciate this, you need to know some of the setting that's going on in Corinth, especially if you've never read through the letter before. There are some serious problems in Corinth. For example, there's a guy sleeping with his stepmom, and he's a member of the church. Not great. There is Lord's Supper being celebrated in such, an, such a way that it's an abomination. And people are dying. People are getting sick and dying under the discipline of the Lord. They have a over-realized eschatology. They think that heaven has basically come and it's in the church at Corinth. They believe that spiritual gifts like miracles and prophecy are far more important than anything else. Tongues is the most important. They, they think that the special gifts are the ones that they desperately need. And the word of God is not nearly as important. There are some real problems in Corinth. And yet notice what Paul says about the people at Corinth. He says to them, notice in verse 2, the church of God, the, in spite of all this, Paul calls them the church of God at Corinth. Isn't that a wonderful encouragement? Many times our churches have problems, don't they? We see them all over the show. Maybe you're part of a denomination and you've heard things happening in other churches. But you know, the wonderful thing is, though churches have different struggles at different times, yet they are still the church of God. And that's a wonderful encouragement to us, isn't it? Not to despair and give up at signs of trouble, but to fight for the church of God. But notice even more so what he says after that. He says, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Do you hear what he's saying there? He writes to this church with such troubles, such problems, such difficulties, that he's going to address, and he calls them saints. And he calls them those sanctified in Christ Jesus. Now, that's a wonderful encouragement, isn't it? I wonder where you're sitting right now. Maybe you're sitting to yourself thinking, well, I'm not. I'm not particularly holy. What, what level of holiness do you need to be called sanctified? What, how many good works do you have to have achieved? You know, how much Bible reading and prayer does one have to do in order to be called sanctified, holy, a saint, one of the holy ones? Surely you have to do a whole lot, right? You need to be as dedicated as Daniel as holy as Isaiah, as rigorous as Paul. No, no you don't. You just need one thing. To be sanctified in Christ Jesus. To be called and to call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You need the grace and peace that comes from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, at the end of the day, Paul can write to this group of misfits because they're not saved by their level of holiness. They're saved by the grace of Christ through faith. And so he can write with confidence and address them as some of God's beloved people. Yes, they have some issues that are going to have to be worked through. But as we read through the letter, we must remember at all times that these are God's people that he's addressing. 
He writes to them with authority, but they are God's people. And so too for you. If you have believed in Christ, you are one of God's people. And so you should be encouraged to go on all the more as one of God's people. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time in 1 Corinthians, and we just ask that as we journey through it, you would help us to receive your word as it comes from you through your servant Paul, and that you would help us to remember who we are in Christ, and that by remembering who we are in Christ, we would go on in Christ all the more, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for another day and another week. I'll see you back here next week for another round of Logan's Devotions. Mm-hmm.